question 14 they have given us the population of egypt in 2017 and they want us to write the population in standard form so that's going to be 9.75 times 10 to the power of 1 2 3 5 6 7 then part b says the population density of a country is the number of people per square kilometer in 2017, the population of Indonesia was 2.62 times 10 to the power of 8, correct to three significant figures. The area of Indonesia is 2 times 10 to the power of 6 kilometers square, correct to one significant figure. Calculate an estimate for the population density of Indonesia. So, population density is the number of people per square kilometers. So 2.62 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by 2 times 10 to the power of 6. So we can simplify it by solving the indices. So 10 to the power of 8 divided by 10 to the power of 6 is going to be 10 square. 2.62 times 10 square is going to be 262. And 262 divided by 2 is 131. So that is your population density. Question, th question 15 says the shaded region is defined by three inequalities. Find these three inequalities. So this one is x equals to 5. This one is y equals to 3. And this one we have to find the gradient first so rise over run is rise is of three run is of three as well so this is y equals to x plus one so now for the inequality part for at x equals to five we have values of x which are less than five so that means less than equal to 5 and why less than equal to because the line drawn is like a full straight line. It's not a dotted line. If it was a dotted line, then it would be just x is less than 5. For y, the values of y are increasing. So y is greater than equal to 3. And for the line y equals to x plus 1, the values are decreasing. So y is less than equal to x plus 1. That Q is a subset of P. P intersection R is null. Complete the Venn diagram to show sets Q and R. So if it so if Q is a subset of P, so that means Q is inside of P. And if there is no intersection between P and R, so that means R is going to exist separately over here. Then in the next question, it says, here are the first four terms of a number sequence. Find T5. So if you look at the pattern, whatever the number of the term, uh, like the number of term is, that is being squared. And the numbers being added to them have five added to them each. So there's a difference of five between the uh, 3, 8, 13, and 18. And the squared numbers are the number terms. So for T5, it's going to be 5 square. 18 plus 5 is going to be 23. And for the result, 25 plus 23 is 48. Then in the next part, it says find an expression in terms of n for T n. So that's going to be T n equals to n square plus um, 5 n minus 2 yeah n square plus 5 n minus 2. 
because between 3, 8, 13 and 18, there's a difference of 5. So we multiply n with 5. And since 5n would give us 5, so to make it 3, for like the first term, we subtract 2. So n squared plus 5n minus 2. Question 18 says, the diagram is the speed time graph for part of a car's journey. The deceleration of the car between t equals to 140 and t equals to 200 is 0.2 meter per second square. Find the value of v. So if the deceleration between 140 to 200 is 0 0.2, so that's going to be, since the gradient of a speed time graph gives us acceleration or deceleration, deceleration if the slope is negative, and since this is a negative slope, so negative 0 0.2, why negative? Because it's deceleration. Negative 0 0.2 equals to 0 minus V over 200 minus 140. 0 0.2 equals to 0 minus V over 60. Negative 0 0.2 times 60 equals to negative V, which is going to be negative 12. So the negative signs get cancelled out and 12 meter per second is the value of V. Part B says the car travels a total of 1800 meters in the 200 seconds. Find the value of T. So if it travels a distance of 1800 meters in the 200 seconds, now remember whenever we have a speed time graph, the area under the graph would give you the distance. And the slope would give you the acceleration. Since we're now talking about the distance, so what we will do is you will first see what type of shape we will first see what type of a shape we have. Since this is a trapezium, and the area of a trapezium has the formula of I'm just gonna write that down over here. Area of trapezium is one over two times height times sum of parallel sides. So our parallel sides are this and this and height is this which we have calculated as 12. So what we will do is we will put this equation equal to 1800. So let me just 1800 equals to 1 over 2 times 12 times 200 plus 140 minus t. So that's 1800 equals to 6 times 340 minus t. 1800 divided by 6 is 300. And T would equal to 340 minus 300, which is 40. So it's 40 seconds for the value of T. So in question 19, it's saying, on the grid, draw the vector 3P and Q minus P. So for 3P, we know that our vector is 2, 1. So if you find 3P, that's going to be 3 times 2, 1, which is 6, 3. So if you start from over here, you're going 6 points to the right and 3 up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. So basically, this is our 3P. And then it says Q minus P. So for Q minus P, Q is 1 to the right and 3 down. So 1, negative 3. So if we subtract Q and P, so 1, negative 3, minus 2, 1. And that's going to be negative 1 and negative 4. So if we start from over here, Negative 1 is over here, and then 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
So basically, this is our vector for Q minus P. In question 20, it says, a plan of a house is drawn to a scale of 1 is to 50. On the plan, the floor area of the kitchen is 30 centimeters square. Calculate the floor area of the real kitchen. Give your answer in square meters. So if on the scale it's 1 is to 50, so first let's convert this, uh, let's convert the centimeters into meters. So 1 meter is 100 centimeters. So one meter square is going to be 10,000 centimeters square. So to convert the 30 centimeters into meters, we're going to divide 30 by 10,000. That's going to give us 0 0.003 meters square. Once we've done that, we're going to multiply 0 0.003 with 50 square. We know 50 square is 2,500. So we move the decimal, so that becomes 0 0.3 times 25, and that is 7.5 meters square. So we start with first converting your uh, kitchen uh, floor area measurement from centimeter square to meter square and then we square the scale as well because the scale is for like one centimeter to meter not meter square that's why we had to square 50 as well since we're talking about the area over here in question 21 they're asking us to simplify this fraction since we have a negative indices, so what we will do is we will flip the fraction first to make it positive. So now it's going to be x to the power of 5. x to the power of 5 over 2x squared divided by positive 3. So now whenever there's a power outside the bracket and inside the bracket, what happens is that both the powers get multiplied. So numerator becomes x to the power of 5 times 3. And for the denominator, the 3 power will distribute on 2 and the x. So 2 cube and x to the power of 2 times 3. That's going to be x to the power of 15 over 8 times x to the power of 6. We can further simplify this because we have the same basis in the numerator and denominator. And whenever same bases are being divided, what we can do is we can subtract the powers. So it's going to be x to the power of 15 minus 6 over 8, which is going to be x to the power of 9 over 8. That is your final answer. Question 22 gives us a function. It's asking us to find the inverse of f. So we start with replacing f of x with y. Right now, y is the subject of the equation. We need to make x the subject. So what we will do is we'll divide y by 4. So y by 4 equals to 3 minus x. And we will swap x with y over 4. So y equals to 3 minus y over 4. And in the last step, we will replace x with f inverse x and y with x. So 3 minus x over 4 is our inverse. In the next part, it's saying solve g of x equals to 6. So 5 over 3, x minus 2 over x. One second. 5 times 3, x minus 2 over x is our g of x. And they want us to solve it when it equals to 6. So 6 equals to 5 over 3x minus 2 over x. 6x equals to 15x minus 10. 10 equals to 15x minus 6x, which is going to be 9x.
x is 10 over 9. Question 23 says express as a single fraction in its simplest form. So whenever we are adding or subtracting unlike denominators, we need to make the denominators equal. And in order to do that, we will multiply the first fraction by x plus 4. And we will multiply the second fraction by 2x minus 1. So that gives us 5 times x plus 4 minus 3 times 2x minus 1. And this entire thing is divided by x plus 4 times 2x minus 1. As you can see, the denominators were equal now. So I just combined it as a single fraction. So expand the brackets in the numerator. 5x plus 20 minus 6x plus 3 divided by x plus 4 over 2x minus 1. Combine the like terms. 20 plus 3 is 23 and 5x minus 6x is x. And this is our fully factorized version in its simplest form. P is the point H7. P lies on the line 3y plus 2x equals to 5. Find the value of H. So what we do is we put this point in this line. So 3 times 7 plus 2 times H equals to 5. 21 plus 2H equals to 5. 2H equals to 5 minus 21. 2H equals to negative 16 h equals to negative 8. Then it says line L is perpendicular to the line 3y plus 2x equals to 5 and passes through P. Find the equation of the line L. So if it's perpendicular, first what we do is we figure out its gradient. Whenever two lines are perpendicular, the product of the gradients equal to negative 1. So what we do right now is we first find the gradient of P. Like not P, like the line on which P lies basically. So in this case we make this equation in terms of x and make y the subject. So 3y equals to negative 2x plus 5 and y equals to negative 2 over 3x plus 5. So now that we have the equation in terms of the slope-intercept form, we can see that this is our gradient. So what we do is we use this condition, negative 2 over 3 times m2 equals to negative 1, which means m2 would be positive 3 over 2. Now next is to find the equation of line L. So since they say that the equation of line L also passes through P, which means we can use the point negative 8 and 7 to find the equation. So for this, the formula we'll use is y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1, y minus y1, which is 7, m, which is going to be 3 over 2 times x minus negative 8. I'm going to get rid of the fraction. So it's going to be 2 times y minus 7 equals to 3 times x plus 8. 2y minus 14 equals to 3x plus 24. And just going to bring this over here. 2y equals to 3x plus 24 plus 14. 2y equals to 3x plus 38. And y is going to equal to 3 over 2x plus 38 over 2. Which can be rewritten as 3 over 2x plus 19. 5 says we have a matrix A. A, which is 2, 0, negative 3, negative 1. Evaluate 2A minus negative 5, 4, 0, 3. 
So 2 times 2, negative 3, 0, negative 1, minus negative 5, 0, 4, 3. And that's going to be 4, negative 6, 0, negative 2, minus negative 5, 0, 4, 3. That's going to be 4 plus 5, 0, minus 4, negative 6, minus 0, and minus 2, minus 3. 9, negative 6, negative 4, negative 5. That is your answer. The determinant, what we will do is we will do 2 times negative 1 minus 0 times negative 3, which is going to be negative 2. C says find the inverse. So we know that the determinant is negative 2. You need to find the transpose. It is A. Transpose is going to be negative 1, 2 negative 0, 3. What you do is you swap your first and the fourth value and you change the signs of the second and third value. So now, once you have the transpose, the inverse is going to be 1 over the determinant, which is negative 2, times the transpose. That can be simplified to 1 over 2, negative 3 over 2, 0, and negative one and then it says find the matrix x when x times a equals to four negative two so in part d they're asking us to find the matrix x so they have get told us that x times a equals to four negative two so to make x the subject what we will do is we multiply a with a inverse. So if we're multiplying a with a inverse over here, that means a inverse will come over here as well on the right hand side after the matrix. So the original matrix times its inverse always equals to the identity matrix. So x equals to 4 negative 2 times a negative 1. Now we replace a negative 1 with its value which was 1 over 2, 0, negative 3 over 2, negative 1. So now when we multiply these, first 4, negative 2 gets multiplied with this column. So that's going to be 4 times 1 over 2 minus 2 times negative 3 over 2. And then I'm going to multiply 4, 4, negative 2 with the other column. So that's going to be 4 times 0 minus 2 times negative 1. So that's 2 plus 3 and 0 plus 2. So that's 5, 2. That is your value of x. Oh, <laughs>